Hello, everybody. My name is Sam K, and I'd like to welcome you guys back to Tuesdays with K. We have another SM58 knockoff. Actually, this one is technically a ripoff without being a blatant ripoff, but it's still a ripoff. And arguably, they did try harder on this one to make it look like an actual sure SM58. So it may, by the end, actually be getting the same title as this one, which I reviewed last week. But the honest thing about this is this microphone it does somewhat specify that it is not a SM58. Now, the Choice microphone straight up calls itself an SM58. The way... The way I, I kept calling it way dynamic. The way mic is a way mic new WM58. Now that's very close to the SM58 name, but I will give them minor credit points for trying to be different so that they didn't get sued. But I'm gonna be very clear about this. I already know what this microphone sounds like, but let's just go ahead and jump right into it. As always, guys, I'm recording through the DBX-286S so I can get clean gain on this. I do have it set at about 50% if you are curious, getting peaks at around negative 9 decibels. And, of course, I have it running into the Wave XLR from there, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. I do not have the clip guard engaged or any of the pre-processing effects on the DBX-286S. I will add no post-processing effects. However, I will add a limiter simply for ease of use. And if you guys are interested, you get there's information in the left-hand corner. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into what you get in the box. You get the microphone, and you get an XLR to quarter-inch cable. And some documentation that I don't trust. You'll find that a lot. In a lot of these, I don't trust the documentation. It's a little weird uh, whenever you're getting ripped off that you might not trust everything that comes with. And the build quality. The build quality of these is that this one actually does feel the best. It does have metal body, metal mesh grill. The handle is actually powder coated, which I appreciate. It is weird because this is the cheapest of the bunch of all of the microphones, including the Shure's. But at the same time, there is probably bad internal wiring inside of here. I would not be surprised if this microphone could not handle the same level of abuse that the F48 or 58 can. It would actually surprise me if it could. That being said, it does seem to have a pretty decent build quality if you are going to use it in a studio. Now let's go ahead and talk about what I think the specs are. Uh, the microphone is obviously a top end or end address microphone. It is uh, probably about 50 hertz to 14 kilohertz based on what I've heard. And I think it has about a sensitivity of negative 57, possibly in a half decibels. It is not super sensitive. It is a rather hard mic to drive. Um by comparison of other microphones. All right, and I'll go ahead and test the way mics polar pattern really quick and spin it around as I talk into it, give you guys an idea of what the polar pattern is and uh, it should be cardioid. And in that case, give you guys an idea of what the off axis rejection and coloration sounds like. I'm now talking to the front of the way mic WM58. Now talking in the side of the microphone now talking in the back of the microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and test out the resonance on this thing. I would not be surprised given the fact that I notated in the ripoff video that this seems to be heavier uh, than the Pile PD mic despite not having a transformer inside of it. So they must be using heavier metals which do tend to be a little bit louder if you tap on them. So let's go ahead and jump right into doing the mic resonance. Um, so, actually, kind of impressive. <laughs> I'll give it to you, Wayne Mike. You that was impressive. Fu 
All right, let's go ahead and do a pop test. So pop goes weasel, pippity pop, pippity pop. C says seashells by seashore. Pop goes weasel, pippity pop, pippity pop. C says seashells by the seashore. You're going to make me say something not else nice about you, aren't you? You did good on the pop test with your normal, you know, peas that weren't too harsh. Why are you doing this? All right, and since this is a handheld microphone, I figured I'd do a hand-holding test, passing it between my hands to see how much handling noise it would pick up. So I'm just going to pass it between my hands and grip it to give you guys an idea. Finally, I can shit on this microphone. It sucked at the hand-holding noise. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do a background noise rejection test or the clicky-clicky and typey-typey test. So I'm just going to go ahead and type on my keyboard as I talk into the microphone, give you guys an idea of how much my voice versus how much the keyboard noise it is picking up so you guys can get an idea of what it would sound like if you decided to go ham for some reason. And pressing on the WSD key, space bar, R key, clicking the mouse, and doing that good stuff to give you guys an idea of what this would be like if you were playing a video game. All right, and I am going to go ahead and cup my hand around the basket of the microphone, something that I got from Bandrew over at Podcastage. He does this uh, in order to emulate what some rappers and singers do whenever they're holding the microphone for some reason. And I am now talking into it with my hand cupped. And this probably sounds a lot worse. It is probably uh, sounding even worse than it usually does. So I apologize. So let's go ahead and remove my hand. And there you go. Obviously there were good things that I did say about the microphone, of course, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. I don't like this microphone. And despite the fact that it did impress me on some aspects, I do like that it doesn't have this shiny freaking head that all the other ones have. I, it did go with the matte look, which is more akin to the Sure. Which, kudos to you, Way Mike. You did something right. It also went with the power coated handle. But that handle is actually somewhat irritating to grip onto. It has like these striations that actually make it dig into your skin a little bit. And it's actually kind of uncomfortable. So, yeah, it's, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it for that. Uh, obviously, as well, it is still a ripoff. Uh, and I don't like that it's a ripoff. It actually says SM58 on the neck, which is why it is a ripoff without trying to be blatant. And the most important aspect of it, the audio, the audio sucks. If it could have done the audio right, maybe I would be able to forgive it a little bit, but it doesn't. And I can now crap all over this microphone. The audio on this microphone sucks. It actually sounds worse than than the Choice Selects microphone, which I actually thought that this one would sound the worst. No, this one sounds the worst. It is boomy. It is really boomy. And the top end is thin. It is almost not there. It is piercing and harsh and thin, and it's tinny. And I, it sucks. It really sucks. It is definitely not trying to emulate the sure vocals. So I don't know why the hell they decided to even call it the WM58 if they're not even going to try to be like the SM58. That's the one thing that I don't get about all of these. Why are they not trying to get the vocal stylings? You'd think that maybe while doing this, you'd maybe want to try to get the quality of the audio. So, can I recommend this microphone? Absolutely not. It sucks. It's a piece of shit. It's a blatant ripoff. 
without trying to be a blatant ripoff. And that is that is just annoying. It, to me, it's frustrating because there is a good microphone somewhere in here. But it ain't this, Chief. So I'm going to go ahead and end that video there. So I want to thank everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Check the awesome content I created, including links to see in this video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.